Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome to a guided tour of the Sam's Trains model train graveyard. About four years ago I uploaded a video of me exploring my locomotive junk box and I just thought you know a few people might like to see what is not pride of place on my locomotive shelves and what I keep hidden away behind the scenes and amazingly nearly a hundred thousand people watched that video. For some reason people just love to see ruined model trains. Well I've got some bad news on that because in the four years or so since I made that video the junk box has gone from a box to a room full of boxes full of broken model trains. Now I know this is kind of a problem right maybe I'm a little bit of a hoarder because I don't throw stuff away right I just tend to dump it in that back room which I know is bad but actually you wouldn't believe how often these uh, sort of boxes of junk have actually come in useful sometimes I might buy a model that needs a, a part or maybe I'll be repairing something that's broken and it just needs that specific part and you wouldn't believe how often I can go in there and find exactly what I need and you know me you know someone like me that does crazy experiments it's amazing how often you might need an old loco chassis or a coach chassis or I don't know an old wagon body you never know when you might need it and quite often quite a lot of the time the stuff in that cupboard does come in useful right so there is stuff in there that I've probably not seen for years I don't even know how many boxes of stuff I'm going to pull out but we're going to explore it today we're going to see what I've got maybe it'll give me some video ideas and if it gives you some ideas do comment them down below but let's explore let's see what I can find <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, oh God, it's falling over. <coughs> oh. One, two, and three. <laughs> do you know what? I think that will do <laughs> because already I think this is going to make a long video. There is more inside, so if you enjoy this and you want to see more, let me know. <laughs> but I think we'll call it a day for now. Where do I even start with this? Well, I guess I'll just get going, start taking a look. So I do know what some of the stuff in this first box is. Uh, I bought some broken locos on purpose for salvage or scrap. So if you like salvage or scrap and you'd like to see more, watch the heck out of that first series. Share it, tell your friends about it, because if it does well, I do have some more locos that I could fix up. So yes, more salvage or scrap possibly, but only if it does well, because seriously, that is a gruelling series to film. So what's this? This is a, a standard four or standard five? Good Lord, look at that. Uh, yeah, it's a standard four, all right. Wow, that should be interesting, shouldn't it? But yeah, that has definitely seen some better days, no doubt about it. Uh, what else have we got inside here? Oh, this is an old Hornby Class 37. This is a model I do not own. I don't have a Hornby 37, I don't believe. No, so yeah, I don't know. It's broken, it doesn't work. Shall I show you it? Can't hurt to show you it. There it is. Huh. It's all there, ain't it? Well, well, maybe one day it'll get fixed up. <laughs> maybe it will just rot in this box forever. I don't know. Can't leave it too long. Otherwise, I suppose it, it will rot badly. All right, what do we got here? Oh, you see, this breaks my heart, this does. Look at this beautiful Triang Hornby box with one of the classic old Princess Victoria locos inside. I mean, this princess was one of Hornby's, or the new Hornby, I should say. It's basically their first ever locomotive, this. So it'd be really nice to get that one going. Although that is a later version of it, I should say. Right, what have we got inside here? What the devil is this? Virgin Atlantic? It's a drawstring bag. Okay, well, I didn't promise everything was model railways related. Thought it would be though. Right, man, look at this. Got some great Western coaches in bubble wrap. <laughs> this was for an experiment that I never did. Well, I will do it. Let's take a look. Never been opened. This is the problem, I get ideas. I get more ideas than there is time to film the ideas. Oh, they are beautiful coaches. What am I doing leaving these wrapped up? And they're in great condition, but yeah, they, they were actually intended for an experiment. 
but these are too nice to experiment with. I can tell you that right now. Far, far too nice. I'm going to, ah, uh, well, mind you, two of them are restaurants. But still, look at those. They are beautiful. So I probably won't be doing an experiment on those. I'll probably use some of my other Great Western coaches because they are not as nice as these. All right, let's move those off. Yeah, see that? I've oh, just completely forgotten about those. Uh, oh, look, these would be handy. <laughs> and look, there's a bit of El Tipo's hat. Who ever thought to see that here? That's weird. But yeah, some uh, like dividers for folders. Oh, that's fine, that's great. All right, what have we got? We've got a dock shunter. I think this was another salvage or scrap candidate. I think I might have had this lying around already. It's in fine condition, missing some buffers, so I could make some new ones. Yeah, that's a, these are really good locos, actually. I love them. So one day, one day that might get fixed. Another loco. A pannier tank. I've got a couple of these already. And look at that, copper chimney topper. You see, when I can complain in modern reviews about new expensive locos not having a chimney topper, yeah, I should point to these. Look at that, look at that front coupling. It's just totally crippled. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like someone's just, uh, just crashed it into something real hard. Yeah, that needs some TLC. And it'll get it one day. It might. Oh, this is sad. I can see some really sad things <laughs> inside this box. There's an old Triang 040 tank engine. You see, it would be rude just to leave this to rot, wouldn't it? This needs some attention one day. One day, one day it will get it, that's for sure. Let's see, look at this. This makes me sad. This is a an old Midland Railway wagon. And it's old gauge, I guess. It's got very, very rusty wheels. Half the body is gone. Maybe I've got half the the rest of the body. Maybe I haven't, I don't know. But that's that would have once upon a time been a really nice wagon. But I didn't do this to it. I mean, it's not like I haven't destroyed most of the stuff you see inside here. Oh, oh, oh. That's, so that's three quarters of the wagon body I've got. So you see, one day I could try and put all that back together. Maybe I could try and 3D print a new body for it. You see, I have the power to fix some of this stuff now. You've seen this before, no doubt. Look at that. That's a beauty, isn't it? But again, the uh, the chassis for this went for uh, an experiment. I don't think I ever filmed the experiment. <laughs> it was just an experiment. But you see, I know I don't have the skill to do anything with this, which is unfortunate. But maybe one day that will change. So it stays in the box. And if there is ever a time where I can fix it up, I will do so. See, you've seen one of these in my videos before. I've got another one, but um, I don't think it's got a roof. No, I can't see a roof for it. There is a sort of roof, but it doesn't fit. But I could cut it so that it does fit. So, yeah, it's not it's not all lost, is it? It's not all lost. Here's one that could be fixed up. This is a, a Lima wagon. Yeah, so it's all there. It's got its buffers. Again, O-gauge, but yeah, that, that could easily be sorted out one day. Another O-gauge chassis, not too much to say about that. Uh, here's, you know, an experiment candidate one day. It's an intercity coach of some description. Yeah, a VR coach. It's quite nice, though. It's all there, all the buffers, metal wheels. Yeah, a couple of hours, well, what, 30 minutes, quick, once over. And that could be put back into service very easily, I would have thought. <laughs> Look, there's a, a horse. Why have I got a horse with yellow painted eyes? I don't know, but I guess for some reason I decided the bin was not the right place for it. I think I've showed some of these before. Ooh, bits dropping off. <laughs> yeah, some sort of cattle wagon in O-gauge. That's quite nice. Chassis has been crushed inside it though. Yeah, might need to fix that at some point. Maybe. This would be nice. Ooh, body's just dropped off it. Look at this, this would make a really nice wagon but all the wheels are messed up and the brake rigging's touching it. So that, again, that's not one you can just put on the track and use, but otherwise, quite a nice looking wagon. Looks like a kit. I can't see any branding on it. Yeah, well, there you have it. Uh, more chassis. I will just skip over some of this stuff because I might have showed it before. And then there are, you see, this would have been really handy, actually. Look, we've got some Lima pantographs. In fact, for the current series of salvage or scrap, these might have been really, really handy. What are they for? Came from GG Models, cost five pounds. Yeah, I could have put those on that Lima Electric I restored, couldn't I? And the next model I know I have showed before, but again, I, I still 
really can't be bothered to <laughs> do anything with it. It is the uh, double O gauge Garrett kit, um, which yeah, is just a complete mess. I really don't know where to start with it. But it's here in case I ever do feel brave, you know, it might get sorted one day. Right, well, that's the first box. That's everything inside it. What a lovely lot. So I'll get the next box and we'll take another look. Oh, I think this second box might be the actual pit. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be anything of much good inside here, but we shall see because you never know. And I've already got some ideas from those great Western coaches I found. So we've got an Amtrak body. Yeah. Comment down below if you recognise what that might be from. That's in a right nasty state, and I bet there's a chassis for it someplace. We shall see. Oh, I've showed this before, so we'll glaze over that. That's one of those old Triang bodies. There's definitely a chassis for that someplace. Look at this. This is an old Lima chassis that I, uh, I pinched parts from, I believe. Uh, I needed some Lima gears, got this chassis lying around in here. Uh, instead of repairing it, I just decided I'm going to take this one for parts. Uh, I don't think, I think it's missing its sort of bogey chassis base thing as well. So yeah, there's not much way of restoring that, unfortunately. I suppose I could now, now with my 3D printer, that might be possible. I've got some old bits of Lima O-gauge track. I have no idea what possessed me to keep hold of this stuff. Some of it's double O-gauge, but this is like steel track. Might be good for an experiment, but I certainly wouldn't put any trains I care about on it. Ah, we've got some other Lima parts. Ah, so that's the bogey look. That's the base bogey for that Lima loco I looked at. And there's the rest of the gears and such. But yeah, I mean, you sometimes do need Lima parts. So it's handy to have a donor loco. I reckon this might be the chassis for that first loco I looked at. But as you can see, the, the whole bogey assembly for the front here is just missing entirely. Uh, but again, I could, I mean, I've done quite a few Mahano restorations, so if there's ever a broken gear or a missing gear or a pickup that doesn't work right, yeah, I think this could be a great donor loco, so it's handy to know that I've got that. Steph. <laughs> Steph. Yeah, I mean, that's that looks perfectly serviceable, doesn't it? It's just filthy. So a little bit of time, a bit of cleaning, I think that might be okay. What else have we got inside here? Now we've got an intercity coach. That one needs a coupling, but that's not a problem. I can produce couplings now, so that's okay. Yeah, perhaps needs a bit of painting doing to it as well, but yeah, that probably wouldn't be too much of a big deal. Look at these. We've got some O-gauge axles. That's useful to know. Some of them are metal too. That one's metal, but I think they're all metal. Probably quite old, very, very rusty, but... I could clean these up, so yeah, if I need O-gauge wheels or if I've ever gotten something that's got plastic wheels and I'd rather have metal ones, with a little bit of work I could totally do those up. And then we've got this, look at that, that's one of the Triang cement wagons, loose coupling, no top, but uh, it's otherwise all there. So I could maybe try and, three. that might be a project, you see, I could 3D print a new top for it, that would be fascinating. We've got a Princess chassis, yeah, it's got a motor, there's a motor inside there, so yeah, great for parts. Looks like I've already pinched the safety valves from the top. Maybe I found another loco that needed them. Maybe I've even taken the front uh, one of the front bogey wheels off. Maybe that was me, maybe that wasn't. I do not remember. <laughs> All right, just a few more bits left. There's another tanker inside here. This is a, is this a Zuf? Oh no, this is Lima. Look at that, a Lima tanker. Not in nice condition really. There's handrails broken and things, but who knows? Who knows? It could come in useful one day. Here's the chassis for that Triang loco. Oh, blimey. Yeah, this is this is bad. This is properly, properly rusted. But the motor unit looks to be complete. I don't think it will work because I can see the wires have come off it. But yeah, I reckon, I reckon as a challenge, I might be able to fix that one day. But it's just getting the impetus to do so, isn't it? That's the tricky part. We've got another, oh, look at that. That's a, a Lima body, isn't it? That's really quite nice. I wonder if that's the body for the Lima chassis I found not so long ago. I love that. That's really cool. What's this? Yeah, it must be French or Italian or something. I really like that, though. What a lovely looking loco that would make. And then the last thing is this, a Ford van. You see, I never knew I had that. Well, I must have known at some point, but I've forgotten. It's lovely. Really like that, a Ford van. Okay, well, that's everything. That's everything from the second box. So now we're going to get on to the final box, which is by far the worst. <laughs> no idea what we're going to find inside there. Some of it hasn't been seen for years. I guess we'll just have to dive in, give it a try. 
Oh, good gracious. Man, I don't know if I'm ready for this one, folks. <laughs> right, let's take a look. So, I suppose I ought to address this, because people are going to wonder what I'm getting up to. Uh, yeah, these are syringes. Uh, I don't know why I bought them, but what I use them for is distributing lubricant. So you know how I use various different silicon greases and stuff? You load these syringes up uh, with it and put one of these sort of tops on. You can actually be very, very precise in the way you distribute lubricant onto parts and stuff. So that's why I use those. I think, I don't know why I bought them. I really can't remember. <laughs> Maybe I just thought they'd be fun to play with. I do not know. And then look at this. Wow, this is an old relic. This was from my Christmas special. I don't know if I've ever showed this properly. But yeah, this is Victoria, I think, from the uh, from the Backman um, Underground Ernie range. But I sort of dirtied this and cut it in half so that it would fit on the set I built for my Christmas special. And this played the villain. <laughs> so it's just the body, don't have the chassis for it, but couldn't throw that away. Now I've got all this track. And this is sort of seconds track, I think. Track that I wouldn't ever use on my layout or any future layouts, but if I ever need to do an experiment with high voltage or whatever, I mean, usually there's a good chance the track will be destroyed when I do that. So having track that is just old and it doesn't really matter too much, uh, yeah, that's that's the idea behind all that. But it's not very interesting, so I'm, please forgive me if I don't show each and every piece of that to you. There we go. Oh, man, there's quite a lot of track, actually, look. I think this might be the steel track from one of those Mahano sets, so not really great for running trains on and trying to maintain, but fine for an experiment. Look at this, what happened to this? This looks like the loco that I blew up in, a, in an April Fool's video, can, I, can anyone remember which one? <laughs> yeah, I think it might have been a couple, a year or two ago, yeah, this blew up on high voltage, and uh, since then I've taken the front wheel out for parts, obviously, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a spares loco now. Oh man, who remembers this? <laughs> this is my track vacuum system that I designed. Uh, it's not very practical. I've got a DAPO track cleaner, so I didn't need to keep it around, but who knows, these, these things are useful. And I think I did put proper five pole motors into these vacuums. And I think this one, yeah, this one's already had it pinched back out again. I think there's a nice one inside this one though, so that's why I've kept these. If I ever am short of nice five pole motors, I can take it out of there. Wow, wow. Well, there's no no guessing why this thing's in here. Hang on. Hornby's rubbish train set controller. <laughs> yep, that's that ain't something you want to use on your trains, so I've got that inside here. Uh, I think I just bought that to review, but I've got no purpose for it. But then again, maybe there'll be an experiment one day. I don't know what it involves but maybe it will put the controller at great risk of destruction and then this will be the perfect thing to use. Don't know, might never happen. Look at this, man, I remember this. This was a, an experiment. This was just an experiment for fun. I just thought, can I make a brass chassis? <laughs> just for fun, I just used some old wheels. And I'll tell you what, that does, that does spin fairly freely. And then I've got this old motor from a Hornby P2 or something, and I was gonna make it rubber band driven. I think this was before, long before I found that Pico MyRail one. Yeah, I thought, can I make a rubber band driven model train? I, I think the answer was no in the end. <laughs> Just, it didn't work very well from what I remember. I think the rubber band kept coming off. Um, but yeah, I could have another stab at that. What's this? This is the body from that loco that exploded, if you remember that. Yeah, that's quite good though. Nothing wrong with that. I could use that again. Oh, look, this is the sign from Anti Christmas Cave. That's again from that Christmas special. That was a recent Christmas special. That was 2020, wasn't it? Then we've got Westminster. Look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous loco, but nothing I can do with it. You know, this is the one I converted into a monster two tender powerhouse. And this was the spare loco, lo uh, tender driven loco, so the wheels are just free. What could I do with that? You send me some suggestions. That might be interesting. All right, let's see. We've got some horrible old coach chassis here. Uh, nothing could be done with those, I don't believe. There's this. This is an old 8F body, I think. I reckon I might have pulled a bit of the body off to do some testing on. Uh, you know how I used to sort of test different plastics to see how different cleaning fluids interfered with them and such? Yeah, I think that was what happened to that uh, that uh, cab that I've just eaten away at. Then there's this. This is, part, this is a spare part for the Hornby turntable. You never know with the Hornby turntable when you're going to need spare parts. Uh, here's the rest of that Lima, I think that's a, uh, no, a mainline or an Airfix N2, 
wheel set, <laughs> what's left of it. Not much left of it. Ah, oh, look at this, we've got motors. Didn't realize there were motors inside here. That's a, that's a Mahano motor, Hornby 040 motor. I think that's the one I blew up. That's a, a Triang single wheeler motor. Man, I didn't know I'd got half of those. Here's the bedspread. There's a meme on Twitter actually of me emerging from underneath this bedspread. That's another prop from the Christmas special. It was quite a fun project. Uh, here's the body from the N2, I believe. Yeah, I think this features in salvage or scrap. For one of the little links, you see me horribly gr gluing a piece of uh, bodywork onto this. But yeah, it's a completely ruined body that I'll just use. Well, again, it came in useful for salvage or scrap. This I do recognise. This was a, a prototype body, just test print, of a 3D printed coach that I was designing. I won't show you too much about this, because I'll do a video on it at some point. But yeah, that's got a full interior, and I've designed a chassis and bogies and such for it as well. So uh, yeah, but I don't need that body anymore, because that was just a test print. Look at this. Now this is a classic right here. This is an old Britannia. In fact, it is Britannia, number 70,000. An old body, no smoke box, no buffers. No, no, nothing actually. It's had everything stripped off it, hasn't it? But once upon a time, that would have been a fine locomotive. Look at that. That's a fan blade from one of those track vacuum cleaners. Well, obviously, I just discarded that, but you never know. You never know when that might come in useful. Oh, I've showed these before, I think. These might have been in the video four years ago. <laughs> I need to throw these away, actually. Yeah, this is cheap plastic track. Yeah, I don't know why I've still got those. Where's the bin? <laughs> Yeah, there's so much track inside there already. I'm never going to need that. All right, let's see. This is all rubbish. Yeah, just old wagon chassis, wires. That's a Hornby AC adapter that I've got loads of. So I never need that. More of this old track. Look at this. Oh, look at this. I believe this might have been the chassis from my first ever Pacific locomotive. It was the Doncaster, I believe. This was my first ever Hornby Pacific. Oh no, this can't be that, is it? No, no, this is not that. This is not the Doncaster. This is a Tornado chassis, I think, but why have I got it? And why is it here? I don't know. It actually is in perfect, good working order, but it's not, uh, not got a motor or anything. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what happened with that, but if I ever need crank pins and such, I can use that. That's the roof from a, a building. I think it's this building. <laughs> and look, here's my old 3D print graveyard. So these are some of the first ever objects I ever created using the 3D printer. That's my first prototype wagon. Can't throw that away, but uh, yeah, it's certainly not much to shout about. That's uh, another old chassis. That's one of my first high class bodies. It all fits together pretty good. So yeah, I've got to keep those for posterity. One day I'll, I'll look back on those with fondness, I should think. Here are some more of my 3D printed uh, failures, or just early prints. That's a cattle van body. That's just an early, early edition of that. Yeah, there's a better version of this now that I've completed. Uh, here are some failed prints. I believe these started to warp and I noticed it while they were printing so I just cancelled them and that's why the tops are not finished but yeah that's a half completed, in fact more than half, nearly nearly completed 3D print but they're not going to be right, not, well, not finish. More bubble wrap, don't think there's anything in there. Ah oh, look at this. Now this, this is one of my, this was probably the first ever Sam's Trains experiment. This came along before, probably before I ever started doing videos, or at least definitely before I started doing experiments. Uh, basically, I managed to fit a Scalextric gear onto the axle of this uh, van. And I fitted a Scalextric motor into the body of the van. <laughs> and I made some sort of pickups, I don't know, I think they were just like Scalextric type pickups that touched the track. And this thing went at a zillion miles an hour. It was incredibly quick. Um, but for some reason, it must have burnt out or I must have got fed up with it and it ended up in here. It doesn't have the motor anymore, but you can still see what the idea was. <laughs> My first ever experiment. That's something, isn't it? All right, old wagons. Nothing much to see here. That's a Triang open wagon. I've got a flatbed from other, some sort of other wagon. Um, oh man, I remember this. These are the switches 
These are three really heavy duty switches actually for some signals that I designed. This is when I was still in school, I think. I found an old canister for some, uh, for, well, photography film, I think. And into it I fitted, it might even be in here somewhere. Yeah, I reckon it might be. Oh my God, yeah, here it is. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, into this I fitted some bulbs. I don't know if there are LEDs or bulbs. But these were signals that I used on my railway for a time. Can you believe that? And I even put some different coloured plastics in front of the LEDs so that I'd get the colours. Can I get the end off? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. There are LEDs inside there and also some batteries. I literally soldered batteries into this thing. And of course, because they're LEDs, you can probably do that. <laughs> and these wires were just for the switches so that I could control it remotely. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible thing, but this was when I was learning about electronics for the first time and probably just learning to solder, so that is a relic. <laughs> I wouldn't do it that way anymore, of course. More bodies, a Hornby chassis of some description. I don't know what this is. I think this might have been a battle space item. Maybe it had a searchlight on it at some point. There is the smoke box. That's one of these test smoke boxes I did for episode one of Salvage or Scrap. I'm surprised that's here. Yeah. That was actually filmed a long time ago now, <laughs> months ago. Another body, don't know what's wrong with that one, maybe that one warped a bit. Yeah, it did, slight warping on that, so it ended up in the junk box. Coaches, there's a moth inside there, I won't show you that. We've got a, a triangle, uh, some sort of switcher, yeah, triangle switcher body there. No chassis to go with it though, or maybe there is, I don't remember. We've got a helping hand, once I decided I would buy a new helping hand, but this one doesn't have fully articulated arms, so it's really not that useful. So I got cross with that and just threw it in my junk box. This looks like it's 3D printed actually, but it's not. <laughs> this is a, a Zuef open wagon. Nothing wrong with that at all, but it just doesn't have compatible couplings. So it's in the junk box, unfortunately. <laughs> There's the magnifying glass. What am I doing? I don't know. That's the magnifying glass from the helping hand. Look at this, what ha what's the story with this, I wonder? A cut in half Intercity 125 body. I don't know if I cut that in half, maybe I did. Maybe, maybe I needed half an Intercity body for some reason. More open wagons. Here's a brake van, I don't know what's wrong with this brake van. It must have cost me two pounds. I think this might have been part of a job lot, actually. And I've got so many of these things, I just thought, you know what, put that to one side. Maybe I'll motorise it or do something funny with it one day. Ah, uh, this, uh, this was one of my first diesels, or the remnants of it. Yeah, this was my mainline warship, and it was horrible. The thing was com constantly breaking down, the gears were slipping on the axles, some of the gears were splitting. In the end, out of sheer spite, I think, I just dismantled it and took it away for parts. And I'm still using parts from it today <laughs> for various other projects and stuff. There's a bit more of that building. Man, that building just will not give over, will it? I don't know. Here's a, a coach roof. Is this one? No, that one's not warped. I think there are some badly warped coaches inside here. We get into the dregs now. There's a triangle chassis. It's fine though, I mean that's a completely usable trying chassis, but as you can see I've stripped all the valve gear off it. The valve gear from this loco might actually be on one of my super duper working restored trying models, for all I know, it probably is. Look at that, that's an interior, it's quite a nice interior for a coach, it's got all sort of uh, dinner sets laid out on the tables. Yeah, that's quite cool, might be, might be a good inspiration for a 3D printed project one day. Look at that, that's a chassis from an N2. Yeah, it's an N2, isn't it? I might have said N7 earlier on. I meant N2. Here we go. This is uh, an old, I think this is a Hornby Dublo tin-plated coach, which I thought I would be able to adapt the couplings on and use. Again, this was in my earlier days when I first was getting into the hobby. Of course, I didn't realise this was designed for three rail, so obviously it just shorted out my controller and I didn't know why. In the end, I think I, I tried to varnish the wheels with uh, glue or something. <laughs> it didn't work though, it still shorted out my controller. So I've had that for years and years. 3F, that's a trying 3F chassis. 
Here is a ruined axle set for an old Triang Caledonian single wheeler that I restored. And you can still find the restoration series on YouTube. Yeah, someone had left a Caledonian abandoned in a shed or something. And I bought it, silly me, because I couldn't afford a nice quality one. And uh, I did it up. I managed to get the thing to work. 3F body. If ever you want to paint up a body, it needs some transfers putting on it, but you could do that. Right, so I don't think a lot of this stuff is worth showing. I mean, look, I've already showed you a Britannia chassis, body rather. Why have I got so many of those? I do not know. Let me just have a quick rummage, see if there's anything of interest. Look at this. This is a brand new, apparently unopened set of bullied wheels. Look at that. Complete driving wheel set for bullied wheels. I think I ordered these in a panic when my bullied Pacific had a, a cracked driving gear but in the end I managed to find a different gear so that I never had to open up these axles that's a really nice set of spares to have actually I didn't realize I'd got that right let me show you one more item and then we'll finish off I'll pick a good one all right here we go I found one this is the relic this is a real relic so this is the original tender chassis for the ruined Caledonian single that I restored this will have been one of my first ever proper restorations but I think it was too far gone. Yeah, you can see the axle boxes were broken. I think all the wheels were completely seized up. I think the chassis might have warped. So like I say, this was left in the sun and the rain and everything. And uh, yeah, 50 years will do that to plastic, I suppose. So I did buy a new chassis for that tender. Yeah, that was. I remember that restoration well. That was a lot of fun. Wow. Well, there you have it. That is the Sam's Trains locomotive junkyard, graveyard, whatever you want to call it. Even I had forgotten how much stuff was inside there. I've got these are my 3D printed prototype chassis look. All sorts of stuff inside here. But yeah, that was fun. I've actually come out of that with some ideas. So I don't know, maybe you'll see videos with some of this junk. <laughs> I don't know. But that's it for today. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the dregs of my collection. And if you've got any ideas for what I could do with some of this stuff, please do comment down below. I have heard the suggestion about making a scrapyard on my layout. So, yes, you don't need to suggest that one. Many, many people have suggested that. Okay, thanks for watching, folks. You take care. See you on the next one.